Um, on, on, on my side, um, if I were young, I'm still young, but I, if I were young, um, I still, you know, it's difficult to say that you will make the, the same decisions here because you don't know, had you taken a different decision where, where you will be here. But, you know, um, you know I, I took some decisions here in, in my career path and I, I still believe I will take the, the same one here. Uh, I just want to share what, you know, early 2000, um, I decided to leave the European Space Agency, even though I had a fantastic job. I really liked what I was doing in terms I was I was scientist or, you know, researcher working with remote sensing. We had Anvisat and plenty of data at the, at the time, and I really enjoyed I enjoyed the life and I, I took a decision because of personal reasons here, uh, you know, because of my family and we, we had two, um, uh, two sons here and I wanted for them to, uh, to share a bit more the, uh, you know, a different culture here. We were in Holland, in the Netherlands. I wanted them to have the, you know, a taste of the Swiss culture where I, ca I came from. And I took the decision to, 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 to leave ESA, even though it was extremely well paid and all of this. and. Uh, and I went back to my home country with, uh, you know, a different type of work, uh, maybe uh, less interesting conditions, all of this, but I think still it was the right decision here for due to personal reasons. So of course, you know, uh, motivation linked to, to work or professional uh, are important here, but I, my advice here during your career, those are not the main drivers here for your uh, for your development here. Try to look, try to be as 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 bright as possible here, as wide as possible, and don't jump one one job for for the other. Think about what what you would like to achieve, uh, you know, also for because of personal reasons. Yeah. I want to say, uh, enjoy every moment. Uh, when I was a graduate student, I was worried too much. Uh, I didn't enjoy the research. Uh, I think I had a hard time counting the number of papers I could write uh, before graduation and producing research results. So I think you can enjoy your research. <laughs> I think I have a, a similar uh, comment to, to that. Um, when you when you're coming out of school, you're or you're early in your career, coming to a conference like this where um, you see a lot of technical talks from people that have been in the field a long time, it can be very intimidating, and and you see things that that you might not understand, and and uh, you might think that maybe you're not smart enough, um, but that that's not really um, the, the case. It's just that. You haven't learned those things yet, so so just be patient. And when you see things that you don't understand, take that opportunity and, and learn more about them. But it's not because uh, it's not because you're not smart. It's just you know it takes time. Okay, uh, some uh, maybe comments from from my side. Actually, um, if I given the, the chance. To be honest, uh, I'll be I'll be the same as I am today, because I've been decided to be a scientist from the very beginning. So, uh, what was the uh, motivation to me? Uh, one is from my my late father, uh, because I'm 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 i come from the uh, lower part of the family family yeah, B forty and so on. So my father is a farmer. My late father is a farmer. So just a uh, few words that he, he given to me. If you want to be a farmer like me, you just just say this and follow me. But if you want to to help people or contribute more than what we can contribute today, you must gain a knowledge. Yeah, this is the thing that I think you know, so crucial to me. Being a scientist, you must be a knowledgeable. Yeah, uh, it's a challenge, but if you really like it, it will be materialized soon. So, uh, to me, I've not regret what I'm choosing right now. I choose from the very beginning to be a scientist, even though maybe in different field. Yeah, and in my primary uh, education, I am looking forward to medical doctor. But uh, since uh, a boy is like me, it's 
is always looking for the challenge and new opportunity. So the times goes by and the technology is improved. That's uh, really motivate me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very important remarks. Please step forward and. Great. Uh, my name is George Worrell. I'm based out of the University of Florida, about to finish up a PhD. I work under Jasmine Judge there. So uh, what Dr. Kanea just said resonated with me because I'm looking to go into industry after I finish my PhD, but I really enjoy teaching. And um, I was wondering if any of you or any of you people you know have uh, been able to trade off teaching with industry or maybe a government job commitments because I'd like to continue teaching in kind of a part-time role, even while I'm working in industry. So I wondered if you have any advice or experience you could share on that. One thing I can tell you is that um, what um, Dr. Kanaya said is most important thing is that you want to have industry experience for one thing, that it is broad, first thing. Second thing, it brings some kind of a discipline in you, whereas if you don't have the structured organization to guide you in the beginning, you will not be able to go in that line. Uh, so if you have that structured uh, you know, organization where you are trying to do the work, some of that work may not be interesting at all. They, you will have to do the, the work that is given to you and you will later experience it. You're going to teach a class and not every student is equally bright or you will have to deal with those kind of situations and it helps you in dealing those situations and also industry is already like you know the, the technology or whatever they are using is already established technologies whereas in academics you have freedom to do something new every day so it's a mix of both Anyone else, please. Uh, can, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say good luck. Uh, um, I don't think you can have it all. Uh, this was my advice here, at least at the beginning of your career here. Um, if you go to industry, you will have to work extremely hard here. And I'm not sure you will have plenty of, you know, uh, additional time or maybe on Sunday morning if you have time here uh, to do some additional things like writing a paper or like preparing a course or, or vice versa if you go to university you know you'll be you know called you know for maybe uh, assistant prof professorship and all this that will take a lot a lot of your time here I will my advice would be for you more, maybe more to decide what uh, what you would like to do and i think going to making one decision at this time it might have an impact here of course in the future but in the early years of your career you still have time to think about it and you know to work a few years for industry 100 percent or 150 percent of your time here if you don't like or if you, your base of this expertise here you can always switch it's getting OK, the, the longer you stay in one domain, it's getting more uh, difficult than to switch to another domain, but it's not impossible here. But to have it all at the beginning uh, might, be, might be very challenging, I would say. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I think uh, your plan or decision uh, to work in industry for some time and then to uh, go to the university is, is great. Uh, but if you uh, like to uh, be teaching while you are in the industry, it's also possible, um, I mean, like uh, in, in University Malaysia, uh, Technology Malaysia at least, we do uh, uh, get uh, people from industry to teach our students on a, on a very um, uh, part-time basis. So perhaps uh, in a month, a couple of hours or a few hours or even on a weekly basis, we do invite them to come and uh, share their knowledge because what's happening in the industry and in the academia is a bit different. In industry, they are very, they, they keep abreast with the technological advancement and we do need that sort of uh, knowledge to be uh, passed on to our students. So if you are still interested uh, to be teaching while, you know, in, in the industry, you can still do that. You, you may approach any universities 
um, you know, ask, or if you have a good uh, uh, contact in the universities, you, you may approach them asking if you could, you know, go and teach, um, whether on a volunteer basis or, you know, uh, need to be paid for it, uh, that can be done. I think it's possible, at least uh, in the case of Malaysia, but I don't know what's happening in the US. I'm, I'm sure that's, yeah, similar case. Thank you. Anyone else would like to add? Yeah, I would just follow on um, to Marisa's comment here is, is yeah, you should really um, uh, decide which you value more and focus on that, but then you can supplement. Um, so if you want to be in industry more and then do a little teaching on the side, that's possible. Or if you want to do all teaching and then maybe somehow be involved in industry through the through the um, university, there's ways to do that. But yeah, focus, focus on one and and a lot of um, uh, a lot of programs, uh, like even even through like NASA JPL, we have uh, ways that um, we can uh, do classes um, that it's not a lot, but still you, you get the opportunity maybe once or twice a year to teach others within your organization um, about uh, uh, what, what you're doing. Um, so, you know, classes for, you know, technical managers or things like that. And that gives you that um, kind of satisfies that urge to teach, um, but uh, you don't doesn't kind of uh, split your career up into two paths where you you end up not devoting to one. Thank you. In, please. Hello, everyone. My name is, my name is Rajit Gupta. I am from India, Central University of Rajasthan. Uh, currently, uh, I am uh, just finished my PhD, uh, just submitted my th uh, thesis. So I usually worked on remote sensing uh, application for forestry, uh, and uh, I published some papers. I also published on a paper on JEDI data for uh, canopy height estimation and all these things. So I want to know that uh, what further I can do, uh, whether I look for any postdoc position, I am interested in it. So how you, uh, do you advise me uh, what kind of postdoc opportunities uh, may I look for and uh, whether in NASA J JPL there is any postdoc position uh, for uh, like me whose background is totally environmental science MS in environmental science then PhD in uh, remote sensing uh, using uh, and for in forestry thank you yeah maybe we can rephrase it a little bit because not specific some other people might be having similar problems uh, after finishing PhD and looking for postdocs <laughs> uh, maybe general question how should, how should you approach if you are looking for a postdoc opportunity? What uh, you should be doing? Um, yeah, I would say um, there's a, um, a lot of resources for that um, and uh, promote the society here a little bit. But actually, um, if you uh, do follow the, the GRSS Society, there's a, um, uh, a newsletter that, uh, or it's, I think it's an email letter that comes out. Um, every month that lists uh, postdoc opportunities, uh, all, all kinds of uh, all kinds of opportunities, uh, um, all career levels, but speci specifically postdoc op opportunities from all over the world, um, not not just NASA JPL. So, uh, use resources like that through this society, through other societies um, that um, have have those postings, um, and pretty much, uh, um, you know, don't. Uh, don't limit your 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 searching to say um, your your one specific area that you're comfortable with. You can um, you know explore uh, areas. Um, maybe a post op opportunity comes along that um, uh, that you see that maybe isn't quite in your field. Um, something that you know, and 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 don't be afraid to to go after that um, because uh, you know going through. Um, a, a PhD program really signifies that you know you can take on uh, new things and, and, and learn and, and adapt, um, and, and don't be afraid to um, to uh, to you know 
take on a position um, or apply for a position that that you might not be completely comfortable with because that's that's how you grow in your career you you um uh, if you're if you're only doing uh only applying for jobs or only looking for jobs that that you know you can do and you're very comfortable with that means you're not growing that just means you're you're doing the same thing so so broaden your search and uh, use the the resources out there um that that the society has and others anyone else would like that anything uh, please, uh, well, I don't want to take too much of the floors, but here, um, to me, it's, it's very interesting questions that, that you ask. And I, I, I remember my first IGAS was, you know, a while ago. It was in 86. Huh? It was in Zurich. Huh? I was about to complete my PhD at MIT. And I used these conferences. Well, it was required at the time and still now, today, to publish and to, to present here. And told to the people, go to different groups here, ask people or professor, you know, that you have seen or heard of, um, is, is there opportunity to do a postdoc here? But try to broaden, and I fully agree with what you said here, try to, to broaden your scope here. And where I see here in the future, what is needed is, you know, it's a difference to know, you know, everything about nothing or nothing about everything here. And, you know, going towards the end of your PhD, you know everything, but in a very, very focused field here. And I think what we need more and more are people who bridge gaps between different communities here. You're an expert in forestry here, told to ideologists here, you know, to try to understand, told to soil people, okay, told to atmosphere people to understand the interaction, you know, uh, with, with vegetation here. Well, you said you work with, with GDI here. Uh, NISA will be launched very soon, hopefully. Uh, on our side, we are going to launch biomass at P-Band here in, at the end of next year. There are some amazing opportunities here. But I think, you know, developing, you know, beyond your PhD where you are extremely focused, but you know, you know, in the details here, try, and I know sometimes it's quite, it's not easy, huh? but try to broaden here, try to expand a bit your horizon here by uh, reaching out to different communities close to your domains here. And I'm sure that, you know, with that, you have a very, very bright future ahead of you. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from audience? Hello, uh, good afternoon. Actually, I'm from India. I am doing PhD in IIT Ruruki. Uh, actually, currently I'm working uh, working as an assistant professor. So at the middle of the career, uh, actually, I want to switch from teaching to industry. But uh, currently, the lot of opportunities which are available in the industry, they don't look for the experience with the teaching. So uh, how can I move forward? Uh, so that is my question. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, um, let me first understand the question. So your question is how um, you, you are in the university now and you plan to uh, move to the industry. Um, I think it's a good decision, as I just uh, mentioned uh, earlier, um, to get to get experience because uh, the, the, the environment, the working environment, um, I believe is totally different um, in the university and um, in industry. So if you get an opportunity um, to you know, to enter the industry, I think you should. Um, but but if you still have burning uh, desire uh, to become uh, academics or to become academician, I think uh, you can spend a few years uh, in the industry, two or three years, uh, either industry in, in India or overseas, and you get some experience, uh, and then I think you will be sellable uh, in, in, in the universities. Um, nowadays, universities are looking for people who have industrial experience, um, uh, not, not only just fresh uh, graduates uh, from universities. Uh, as far as uh, Malaysian universities are concerned, uh, they do uh, look for people with industrial experience. Um, so another, another uh, advice would be uh, if you have spent all your time in one country, let's say in India, I think uh, this is the time for you to, to explore some other places. Uh, whether uh, for students or, or for uh, people who are already working, I 
think uh, the more you explore, uh, the more uh, knowledge and, and, and skill uh, you will be acquiring. Um, especially for students who have just submitted thesis or who have just graduated, uh, try to if if you uh, um, try to get postdoctoral positions overseas. This is my all-time advice to my students: uh, don't um, be at one place all the time. Uh, try to travel as much as you can to as many places as you can because that will uh, broaden, uh, you know, the horizon, and you will be getting. Uh, more values, more values, uh, not only the knowledge and skills, but also the values you will get. Um, I mean, you know, you will be enriched uh, uh, by um, so much of values. So that would be my, uh, yeah, not advice, but just a piece of Thanks whatever. So <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much for the sharing. Uh, I'm, my name is Sun Jong Tai, and I'm from NEC Corporation Japan. Yeah, I'm a researcher. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, recently, I have uh, one researcher. He worked on surveillance camera analytic system uh, using these ground sensors. So there is a very uh, uh, like the privacy issue is very uh, important for uh, ground sensors. However, he, he, he asked me that whether privacy is also kind of important when, when we deal with this Earth observation data. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious, like when we later commercialize all this product, will this issue, like how you think about this problem, privacy problem with the EO data? And the second question is that, uh, regarding to uh, deal with, uh, related to my research. Uh, so I do some data-driven approach, machine learning approach. Uh, and recently I tried to incorporate some physical based uh, uh, series in the machine learning method. However, the performance is neither like better than only use machine learning or only use uh, data, uh, only use physical based method. So I don't know uh, when I should stop, like when I might know that this that this will not work, so I should not um, keep uh, diving into this this kind of method and uh, maybe try to try some other methods. So yeah, I, I want to know when you might know that something won't work at all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, it, I mean, it really just comes down to, um, you know, it's specific to the problem that you're working on. Um, you obviously have some metrics that you're going to use to, um, to, to understand if it's going to work or not, uh, and that's very specific to whatever problem you're working on. Um, and, uh, you know, you start out with, you know, some goal in mind with any problem and, and you uh, will spend time uh, working, um, trying different techniques, different methods to, to try to get there. And uh, you always have to ask yourself, um, you know, am I getting closer or not? Um, and uh, is, you know, maybe I'm never going to get to that goal and I have to try a different approach. Um, so, um, you know, it, it's... Uh, I would say there's no specific answer um, to, to, to that problem. Uh, it, it just comes down to um, uh, almost uh, um, uh, if you know if you stall, then 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 try something else. Um, or uh, oftentimes, uh, if you're if you're stuck on um, uh, one problem, uh, go and do something else. Um, uh, work work a different problem. Uh, just set set that one problem aside, and more often than not, um, you um, by kind of leaving the problem that you're stuck on, um, and, and focusing on something completely different, uh, that that spark that insight will come um, because uh, some, some other uh, thing that you're doing will will, will somehow be related, uh, and uh, then then you can come back and and you solve it. So um, it's it's you you. A lot of times are um, uh, tempted to say, I, I, can't, I can't stop working on this until it's finished, until I know it's going to work. Um, but then you just, uh, um, that, that's, you get stuck in a loop. Um, so yeah, take a break, go away, um, work on something else, then come back. 
and, and you might find inspiration. And uh, over time, if it doesn't get solved, then yeah, maybe it's the wrong approach or maybe it's, it's not gonna get solved. Yes, please. If at least uh, we're trying to understand your your first question about data pri uh, privacy here, and I, I will extend this to data policy here. And of course, you know, if you are a private company here, uh, you know, you have some examples here. You, you think you know indoors measurements and all this. You would like to try to, to to make some money out of it. So you will have a data policy here, and you will be able to to sell your data. Hopefully, people will will be uh, will be interested in in in, in selling your, your products here. But I think the you know the link to to Earth observation here and how we do this. Uh, each agency or company has data policy here. And you know, uh, if you spend you know uh, hundreds of millions to to develop a satellite here, you would like to sell the data, and then get some money. So there is a data policy as associated to, to it. And then, of course, you know, if you want to use the data, you will have to to pay for it. Huh? Landsat until 2008, you had to pay quite a lot to get the data. Now it's free and open. Here at, at ESA since 2014, we have a completely free, full and open data policy. So all our, you know, the Sentinels, the Copernicus data, and it's more than 25 terabytes a day of data are completely, you know, you can, you can download, you can use them. And I think that's the, the greatest benefit, you know, what we could do space agency as public entity, because we are paid by, 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 by you, by the taxpayer here, is to make the data available here. If you want to make money, it will be how to develop services or new products using this data, but not selling the data here. And the last point to data policy or you know or privacy here again linked to us observation, it has also to uh, to be linked to um, the, the spatial resolution that you can get. And of course, you know your applications where you give extremely private private or detailed information you know this is uh, you know i would say high or very high resolution here um, at, at isa we all our data as i said are free in 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 germany they have um, if i'm not mistaken all the data up to five meters so above five meters uh, are you know can be used for, by the civilian community everything at a better resolution here might have, as you may imagine, some you know, uh, defense or you know, some, some, some other type of applications here. And then, of course, this, there's a different data policy and it's less for the, uh, for the open public here. But you know, it all depends here for the type of applications here. I can also, we're looking, talking about conferences here. Uh, we, we, we just organized the, the Living Planet Symposium here in, in, in Germany where we had 5,000 people we had to be extremely careful, for instance, not to distribute the list of participants here because those are private informations here. And, you know, from no one, you have to, to sign documents here, or like for, so also for IGAS here, about the data policy and the fact that you, you cannot distribute further, you know, some information here. It will go more and more in that direction because, you know, you have to be careful in order that when you sign up for something that people do not misuse also the data that you're contributing to. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to also give opportunity for the online uh, attendees to ask questions. So there's one question, actually it is somehow related to what we have been discussing. Uh, sometimes the decisions we are taking are not very easy. Uh, what is the biggest risk that you have taken in your career? The biggest risk? Uh, yes. Uh, in my career, I can't uh, recall of any risk <laughs> that I have taken. Um, yeah. As Perhaps uh, when I decided to continue with my uh, PhD, because I joined uh, the local university with my master's, because those days early 2000, 
uh, you can enter universities as a, a lecturer uh, with masters. So after about a few years, and I decided to continue to my PhD. So at that time, I had a very young family, just married and with kids uh, who were just six months and one and a half years old, respectively. So uh, perhaps that was a risk that I took because I had to leave them here in Malaysia and I went to Australia. So perhaps I don't know that you would consider that as a risk. Other than that, I really don't see uh, much risk in my career. Perhaps uh, other panel members would have much higher risk. No, I would not say higher risk. Uh, I went from research to industry. I went to work for Intel in their R&D and um, I saw the culture there and um, that was not um, something I would have liked for the bringing up the family. So I quit that and came to NASA to work. And you always, you know, my, my kids, you sometimes tell me that, oh, you quit an Intel, man, you would, we would have been multimillionaires by now. The, the you know, uh, Intel stock has multiplied so many times, but I tell my kids that, you know, but I wouldn't have spent time with you. See, um, there is always a balance, family and career. You need to balance the family and career. Okay. Uh, actually, it's not really a risk. It's a greed, a conquer that. Uh, uh, instead of risk, actually, is uh, how we can move forward or even take a different approach in our career. So I have my experience uh, moving from uh, private into the government sector. So such a, you know, a different uh, approach in terms of uh, technology optimization. Yeah, I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, pay during the uh, private, but in the government, we are in different uh, perspective. Yeah. So that's, I think, uh, it's not a risk, but uh, a challenge uh, to me because I'm, I'm I'm like to be a uh, you know uh, environment that really challenges me in terms of uh, physical knowledge and also uh, innovation. So another uh, opportunity that I think that uh, is considered a risk also is uh, how I move from conventional method into the automation or AI methods because my background is a geologist. I'm talking about when I when I. Uh, uh, moving forward from industry to government, I will place in a remote sensing center. It's everything in digital. So uh, I took about six months to familiarize and conquer everything and master everything within the six months. So uh, to me, it's a challenge and I like it. Uh, I, 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 the person, uh, I'm the person who can stay along with the uh, similar uh, activity, uh, normal activity. So uh, I think uh, these two things that really uh, raised me uh, since since my involvement in this uh, technology. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, don't have, I don't need this. Um, um, what uh, what to say uh, in terms of biggest risk here? I'd say um, you know I, I mentioned the example between you know the balance between your 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 private and your professional life here. And I think this was also expressed by some other members of the panel, so th there might be a risk here. But I think it's not about uh, taking risks here, but it's more about not to be afraid to take decisions, uh, which is, you know, even more, I would say, more, more challenging here. Uh, you know, you, you have to take decisions, you have to take risks, okay, risks are associated to, to decisions. And of course, you have to inform yourself here. Uh, I take plenty of decisions nowadays in my I have, uh, management position here. I inform myself here. I talk to colleagues here. I try to be as collegial as possible. But at the end, it's your responsibility, your own responsibility to take a decision. And it has risk associated very, very often here. And sometimes, you know, it's, you know, very often it's linked to, okay, to, uh, to budget constraint and other things. So sometimes, you know, the domains of science here that you would like to, to open or not. But the, the, the key questions to me is to ensure that you 
take the decisions here. And you know, you might be wrong. And you know, I've, sometimes I was wrong. Yeah, I recognize that. And don't be afraid of this. As, as long as most of the decisions are the right ones, and sometimes you know, uh, you will not always decide. Or you, I'm sorry, you will decide, or you should decide. And sometimes it's the wrong decisions. But you should not be afraid of this. And I think it's it's very important in your in your career here. Don't you know wait or delay decision because you think tomorrow it will be easier. Thank you. Please. Yeah, I had a very, uh, a very similar uh, comment. The you know successful career is built on a long series of calculated risks, and this is true for decision making, and also true for just say submitting a paper, proposing a new idea. Um, whenever you do that, you are risking opening yourself up to criticism, um, and you have a temptation to not want to do that. Um, but uh, if you don't, if you don't take those risks. Don't um, put new, new ideas out. Don't submit that paper for publication. Uh, you're not going to advance. So don't be afraid of risks. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> of course, uh, the biggest risk was that uh, when I was uh, uh, finding my job, uh, the biggest risk was um, the industry and university might not hire me. That was the biggest risk at the time. Um, these days, the main concern is to win a project and give a scholarship to my student. Uh, but I um, strongly agree with those opinion. Don't be afraid. Most of uh, uh, risk I concern uh, automatically served. So uh, enjoy your time for research and um, finding job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for your comments. Uh, I would like to add just a minor thing about this issue. Uh, it might be a little funny as well uh, from my past experience. Uh, I started PhD three times and all unrelated uh, fields. <laughs> and I quit it twice. Uh, but when I finished the PhD, I finished it in three years, and I also work on industry. But uh, I mean, in your career, you have to make decisions and you have to be brave. And it might be right, it might be wrong, but that's the risk that you are taking. And without taking risk, uh, you may not be able to get to the place where you want to be. And now I work at uh, NASA JPL, uh, and I I'm, don't regret about any decisions I have ever made. Uh, this, I, I don't want to take much time of the, our panelists. They are all very busy people. I would like to get final remarks from them about the career advice uh, for young generations. Okay, um, my uh, final remarks or advice um, to the young um, professionals here would be um, uh, first, um, as I said before, just uh, try to travel. The more you travel, the more um, knowledge, skill, and also values you will be acquiring, first one thing. Second thing, uh, please prioritize quality over quantity. If you are a, 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 a postgraduate student, try to publish in good journals, uh, reputable journals, rather than publishing in um, uh, rather than publishing in uh, uh, not so high quality journals, but you publish more papers. I don't think that would uh, carry any value uh, because uh, when you publish in high impact journals or uh, uh, prestigious journals, um, you will be recognized much uh, better way. And also your work will be cited uh, more. So that is the second. The third one would be uh, uh, try to have uh, plans, try to have short term and long term plans. Um, Maybe a short term plan would be like, you know, what you plan to achieve uh, in a year or two years time and your lo long term plan would be what you want to be in five years time. Let's say you just finished your studies. So what do you want to be in 10 years or five years time? And in order to achieve your bigger goal, then you have to set uh, much shorter term goals like, you know, in a year, if you want to be a professor, for example, so you should be aiming to to publish uh, you know certain number of papers in a good journals or you need to secure some international grant you know within a one or two years time so if you plan uh, systematically in such a manner then um, you would be uh, achieving your target of becoming a professor for example because i can only talk from my perspective and professor um, 
uh, next to me, I mean, Doctor next to me would be giving some other uh, advice. Thank you. Yeah, I think when you look for the job, like earlier, you heard that um, you don't want to stick to the field that you studied or you exp you developed your expertise. At the same time, when you go to any job, there will be some work which is not that interesting will be given to you and you need to be willing to do a mix of interesting and not interesting work and you should not get immediately disappointed oh i came here to do this only interesting work i want to only do that work i don't want to do other work um, that is not going to help in career development in long term and there may be something which is really mundane which you may not be interested but you never know that may be the something that may be the best thing in future so you, know, you need to be open-minded when you go and work and you can't be the manager on the day first day one you go there you can't be a manager of the facility you need to put your time you need to learn the subject you need to learn the work or whether it is a university um, uh, going up in the ranks or in a uh, employment wherever you go to the company commercial company be open and be enthusiastic to do the work and show interest in the work that's the most important thing okay uh, maybe i could share a few points on uh if we can consider advice yes you can take it but i just share my my experience uh, uh, when i was uh, uh, first time uh, dealing with the uh, government entity so i come from the decision makers so uh, first of all i was, I, I would like to suggest that uh, anybody want to maybe uh, grow up their career up to the decision makers uh, you must be able in the first place to differentiate between uh, theoretical and operational. So this is two different things uh, that need to be really uh, uh, either you want to mix up or you want to uh, focus. Yeah, uh, because the um, the environment for decision makers compared to the researcher is quite obvious. Yeah in the uh, decision makers the failure is not an option so it's it's a challenge yeah compared to yeah to some extent maybe you can have some few uh, failure but uh, almost it's not an option so uh, if if i were a, a person who uh, promote the career for decision makers yeah the first thing that i would see is the integrity of the people yeah uh, being a scientist, uh, being whatsoever, career, to me, the integrity is at most. Race followed by the knowledge and also the other one, like uh, creativity and so on. So be uh, sure from the very beginning it, which uh, career with, with path that you want to uh, aiming for the next uh, yeah, five or ten years. Because uh, you can see that currently is uh, technology is so advanced compared to the previous one. In addition, you can see that how pandemic COVID changed some landscape of the technology and the demand of the technology uh, in the globe right now. I think that must be uh, considered uh, very much for the next future. Thank you. On, on, on my side, um... I would say um, be perseverant. Okay, you are you are young here. Uh, be a team player. Even you know, as you know, most of you are about to to finish PhDs, PhDs, so you are extremely focused here. But try to be a team player here. It's very important, you know, to be as inclusive as as possible at at the beginning of your career or even during your 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 career here. Uh, get out of your comfort zone. I'm sure you have you have heard this several times, but I I really mean it. To try, you know, to explore new fields. You know, what I said earlier, uh, bridging new gaps here with different communities, different you know uh, type of, of of activities here, and don't try to how should I say? Uh, be careful about overworking here. 
because you are going to work, I'm sure you're working extremely, extremely hard here, um, which is good, <laughs> but uh, there are limits also. And then, you know, the more, the, the more you work, you're not going to empty the intrade that you have in front of you because someone will always feel it for you. So make sure that you have a difference between your professional work and the, I would say, a social or private, private life here. And don't, don't let your, 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 your work, you know, overtake any of the, the, the other activities here because you are not going to, to last very long, if I may say. So this will be my main advice here. That's good advice. Um, I would say uh, um, one thing is uh, uh, pay attention. Um, and what, what that means is uh, if you're in a meeting, uh, you're in a conference, and um, uh, there's a presentation that uh, you don't think is relevant, um, avoid uh, the temptation to get your phone out, get your computer out, work on something else. Um, treat it as a learning opportunity, because you never know um, when, when you'll need that information. Um, and uh, the other thing I would say is, um, you know, throughout your career, the, the thing right in front of you um, is always going to be daunting. Um, uh, but over time, um, I'd say in general, things are really never as good or as bad as they seem. Um, so when, you know, you're having trouble with a problem or you get an award, um, don't, uh, you know, think that just because you got an award, you're the best thing in the world, or just because you have trouble with a problem, uh, you are a failure. Um, just moderate that, and um, that will keep you um, kind of mentally healthy throughout your career. Uh, I really appreciate for um, giving me a chance to participate as a panel because I'm so young <laughs> to ask, ask you some. Um, uh, the most important thing is how much time you spend on research. Many students do YouTube and research at the same time, <laughs> uh, which is not time for research. I think time you spend on research is your power. So I think this is very important things and uh, please to be a sincere, smart and insightful person. Yeah, this is in the my yeah, this is it. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, our special panelists for their valuable uh, remarks and uh, very useful and very important suggestions and uh, guidance. I believe everyone uh, has found something to take for themselves from uh, this panel and I would like to specially thank them uh, for their valuable time. <laughs>